Me 47M with my couple's friends 40s 50s MF of maybe 7 years or more are going through a transitional period. I divorced my wife of many, many years over a year ago. Our relationship was not good, dead bedroom, she was abusive, I tried to fix things, insisted on couples therapy and individual therapy, it didn't work, I suspect cheating among other things. This account is specifically for venting about that relationship, so it can be pretty bleak reading if you want to take a look. The first post will give you an overview. In any case, things looked good from the outside for the most part at least, so most people aren't aware of what went on behind closed doors. Suffice to say, due to how she operates I became quite isolated, a lot of my friend group fell by the wayside because she did a great job of it. So in the end our friend group were mostly made up of people who were originally her friends. It's a good mix of people, and I really like them. We get on well together. We meet around town, and I occasionally get invited to events with them. We chat and sometimes hang out when we meet at local clubs. However, since they're technically her friends first, I'm pretty much excluded when they're having dinner parties or whatever. I expected this to happen if I'm honest, because my ex is a ducking wizard at manipulation, and I've no idea what version of events they've received, and I've seen this happen to other men over the years too, but suffice to say I left her, and I'm certain that narrative has been exploited. A few of this group have been very supportive of me, and I am forever in their debt for the friendship and support that they have shown me this last year, but the end result is the same, I'm being excluded. I know it's not a malicious thing, it's just how the cookie crumbles, so to say. But, every time I see pictures of an event, or I hear there is something going on, I get a really bad feeling, the only way I can describe it is like heartache, it really pains me and I feel a sense of loss for these relationships that is very severe. I am over my wife, I do not want her back or anything, divorce was definitely the right decision. But how do I process the loss of these friendships? Or it's not total loss of the friendships, but let's say the changing of the relationships. When I see something event online or hear of some event I missed out on it affects me deeply. To the point where I just feel jaded for a few hours. Unable to go about my day because of the sadness heartache I feel. How can I process this in a healthy way? I should point out that I am in a foreign country, so most of my support network was pulled from under me when we divorced. I do have a couple of other friends, but the only thing we do together is pretty much drink. Which is fine on occasion of course. But that's beside the point. How do I process the changing nature of the relationships with this other friend group in a healthy way? I want to maintain contact with them, but I don't want to feel this way every time some event comes along that I'm not attending. It's like a separate divorce all over again, but one I don't want this time. Story 2 My 22M fiancé 21F caught up with a friend and questioned our engagement. Hey all. Edit, we have been together for three year. My fiancé didn't physically cheat on me, but she became emotionally invested with a guy she used, to have feelings for. In November, I discovered that she was sending him selfies of her outfits for work, photos of what we were doing such as carving pumpkins for Halloween, and texting non-stop throughout the workday mainly about pointless stuff. One night she asked if we could watch a show on Netflix which I later found out he was mentioning in their conversation. The last message he sent revealed how he felt for me fiancé and said it's in your court now. My fiancé responded with something like, oh wow. That's a lot to take in. I need to figure out what I'm doing here, but until then we shouldn't talk. She then took a screenshot of the convo and sent it to her best friend. Who said whoa well, what are you going to do? This is not the first time she messaged this guy. 
Last year she was catching up with him too. She told him she liked him, but is with me and thought her feelings were wrong. I found out about the texts. She turned off notifications for his messages on iMessage and Facebook. I confronted her. She said she knew it would hurt me, but she did it anyways. I asked for the ring back, went to my parents for a week. After talking to friends, who told me to end it since this wasn't the first time, I said I have to give it one final chance and see what she does and we have been trying to work through things since. I am seeing a counselor and so is she. We want to do couples therapy, but want to figure out what we want first. We talked about again last night and she said she never flirted with him yet she admitted she may have a little bit when I found out. I feel like I'm running in circles with her. I'm stress eating, grinding my teeth and struggling to forgive. This wasn't the first time with the guy and she said it wouldn't happen again last time. I am scared for our future and she's always saying she loves me. I feel like it's because she got caught though and almost lost me. Any advice is welcome. I am scared this would have lead to physical cheating at some point. Update, my 22M fiancé 21F caught up with a friend and began to question our engagement. Thank you all for the advice I know many of you said I would not take it, but I did. Yesterday I went on my ex's computer and found a conversation from a year ago with her friend that I did not know about. Talking about dreams, weird flirty banter and discussions about pop culture that I thought I got her into hindsight it all lines up. She knew I'm 2019 that there was something there and was not sure how she felt then we were still dating at that point and not engaged. I also found out she was wanting to break up with me four weeks ago. She also broke my boundary of social distancing amp, saw a friend who has been in contact with someone with COVID opinions aside she never told me amp, my family had a few high risk people. We talked last night. I told her about my new findings and said it's over. She needs to explore her feelings for the other guy who looks half as good as me and is nowhere near financially stable. She agreed and I got the ring back. After lots of tears I started to discuss the lease and finances. She's exiting bricks since 80% of our things are mine or my family's. She had been using my car and relied on me to get our apartment. Even with a roommate, she will struggle. I wish nothing bad to happen to her, but she should have thought about all that before questioning our relationship. I have to quarantine until I can move back to my parents for now. It's a weird limbo. It sucks, but I see the light at the end. I'm sad about the good memories but no if this didn't happen she's explore feelings with other guys if we did get married. Have a great boss who told me to take the next few days off amp, great friends who have been talking me through this. I'm thankful for Covid, as it caused a delay in our wedding which would have been one week before D-Day. Thank you for the support Reddit. We all know we deserve better and I know there's someone out there who will love me unconditionally. Now time to heal. Peace and love. Update. My 22M fiancé 21F caught up with a friend and began to question our engagement. Been a while since my last post. Wanted to drop an update to show it gets better. Our apartment lease ended last month. We were able to break the lease with little to no penalty. It was a huge breath of fresh air once that was all settled. She took most of our things and left a little bit of a mess, but hey it all worked out. We have been 90% no contact since only taking about lease updates and arranging pickups for personal belongs. This was the best way to go. It got difficult at times, but it has allowed me to focus on growing myself more. I'm really excited to start this new chapter. My family celebrated with some A5 Wagyu steak from Japan, 
my savings have already increased tremendously and I only took a $3,000 or so hit on the wedding engagement stuff. A small price to pay in the scheme of life lot cheaper than a divorce. In working out again, getting back into old hobbies, enjoying time with family and hope to get back into meeting people once COVID dissipates. Better year, got news of a new promotion at work. Once you get out of the fog it's amazing how things can turn around. If you're young and not married I cannot stress this enough move on. It has been so much better in two months by ending things than the two months of trying to fix things. Thanks for all the support in this thread. My heart goes out to all of you who are struggling through infidelity. I hope my story can show you the hope you need and always feel free to reach out. Cheers. Also side note how long did those who started dating take to make that jump? I know it differs person to person, but I'm curious to hear about your timelines. I for one think six months after D-Day in my circumstance is sufficient. I'm feeling confident about things, but want to focus on myself for a while longer. Edit, someone asked about the car situation. Right before we broke up she was driving my car. She got in an accident no one was hurt. The insurance company gave me a nice check for the total loss she wasn't at fault. So I went and bought the car we had been looking at getting after our wedding. She was not happy when she found out. Some of y'all wanted the original posts. Update, my 22M fiancé 21F caught up with a friend and began to question our engagement. Hey everyone. It's officially been over a year since D-Day. I cannot thank this community enough, as I would not have gotten to where I am without you all. I want to use this post as a way to show you all things can get better if you desire. I have not talked to my ex since our lease ended. The distance was the best thing I could have done. It helped me get over things quickly. I highly recommend doing this. Stand your ground. If you are getting walked on, have a backbone. I finally did, and it felt amazing. After your breakup take chances. Within three months I had a new job that I would have been unmotivated to take if I was in my past relationship. I reconnected with friends, hung out with family, and started new hobbies like hiking. Make new personal goals you're no longer part of a team. So you now need to make goals for your future. For me that was financial and career. I'm happy to say I have exceeded these expectations and will continue to do so in 2022. Lastly, take time to heal. I used a therapist to help, which was amazing. I recovered and eventually felt ready to dip my toes in the water of dating again. I've since found a wonderful girl, who I would never appreciate it as much as she deserves without my past history. We are all on this journey together, but I want to say in most cases it will get better. Much love to this support group. You all are amazing people. I hope we can all leave this thread someday, heal and find the love we deserve. I believe and I believe cause I can see. Our future days. Redditor's reactions. Redditor 1, if she is questioning it now, I can't imagine what would happen if you married her. You deserve better. Redditor 2, stay strong my friend, too many times I see people let their whole lives be defined by one person or one moment. The words you are saying here now are testament that sheer will and determination do in fact pay off, and no one can take that away from you. Congrats! Redditor 3, that is great news. It is so good to hear you have turned the corner and your life is getting back on track. Thank you for coming back to update your story for those still struggling. Redditor 4, way to kick ass. 
stay true to the course and always be a person of action instead of reaction when you get out in a spot. Redditor 5, I've read all your posts and first of all I'd like to applaud you for how well you handled yourself and the situation and hand. It also seemed as though once you discovered the text messages she was sending the other guy. She also seemed more realistic about her dilemma. She didn't try to deny that there was a problem with her true feelings. Even though 90% of the assets were yours and your family's. She gave you back the ring regretfully but she seemed to realize there was a problem. She seems to have been pretty honest once you discovered the text messages and all. I'm sure that without a lot of gaslighting, trickle truthing, and blame shifting it must have helped you to to reach a resolve peacefully. Better that all this happened before you two got married. Really admired the way you stood up to the truth. Right on bro. Op answer, realistic wasn't really how it was handled on her end. I was told there were no feelings, but she continued to tell her friends she had feelings. I just happened to find the texts. Regardless, it's in the past and I wish her the best. Redditor 6, well done chief. Keep it up. Redditor 7, nothing about the X. Redditor 8, so happy for you, keep pushing towards your goals and valuing your new and loving relationship, still keep us updated okay.